Okay, this is the uh, the third and final system that's currently in operation on the property. We're probably going to bring up a fourth soon. But this is a very simple aquatic system. We refer to it as a timber frame pond, and you can see why. It's built from four by fours with uh, galvanized spikes holding, you know, a log cabin style overlap together. There's a rubber liner. It's sandwiched between this layer so when we built it we just let it overhang put the top piece on and cut it off one thing we learned i did create this is on a slight not quite level and there's a hole back there behind that pipe letting water out that's designed to be the overflow and when the tank fills from a rain event or because the guy filling the tank forgot to turn the hose off that does work it does come out that hole but we also have a weep that comes through here i had to do this again when i laid down my uh liner I'd lay down a layer of silicon, I'd lay down the liar, liner, I'd lay down another silicon, and then I would put the, the capping piece on, and that would seal that so it would force 100% of the water to come out where I want it to, which is right here. And there's the liner left that is an overhang for like a down spout. And you can see what that does. It hits this gravel bed, and it goes straight into my swale. So when that pond overflows, it's overflowing nutrient into a, a swell system that's almost 600 feet long and spreading that nutrient across my whole property so that we can not be sustainable as some people say. We have some dwarf cattail here and some uh, crooked rush. This is just some stuff that looks pretty, helps the health of the system. But you can see my, my kale, right, it's just banging. And uh, look at this, look at the shard. And these are just those 50 gallon beds turned into wicking beds. So these are a shallow version of the ones of the first system. Same thing here. This is the ground that I was talking about. This is a nice shaded, cool area. Um, it does get quite a bit of sun here on this side in the morning. So about an hour from now, it'll get hit with sun for about three hours right against this wall. And then it'll be in shade for most of the day. It'll get a little bit of sun then on top and then it'll off. So this was the shadiest part of the system. Ground nuts want a wet, moist, shady creek bank. I created one for them, so this should produce a ton of tubers. And these are the special ones from the Louisiana State University project where they make ground nut tubers about as big as a good-sized potato. Not a big Idaho one, but like, you know, your red potatoes and things like that, fist size. And uh, so they're growing in there. On that solar aspect issue, right down there, you see a little green thing about to come up. That is an achota, achata, I can't remember what it's called, but they, they, they grow like cucumber but they taste more like a pepper. And the scuttle that I have on them is they love early day sun and late day shade. That's exactly what they're gonna get here. I'm gonna train that vine just over here. And I might even put a little bit of lattice work or something, not lattice work, just some hooks or something, run some string or wire and just train it along there and let them cover that whole wall, which will also help keep that wall shaded in the hottest part of the summer and produce a ton of food off one plant coming out of one bed. No, but it's not sustainable, right? I mean, people that say stuff about aquaponics like that, you can't grow in soil, you can't grow root crops. Really? Well, here's a, my next batch of carrot coming up in an ebb and flow bed in this system. Carrot actually doesn't li really need much nutrient. This is not a true aquaponics system, but it gets enough nutrient to grow carrots, so carrots is what will grow. Because I have the expanded shell cap that I talked about earlier in the other first video, uh, I can just I just took carrot seeds and threw them on here. That's all I got to do. They'll grow carrots. This is a new plant we're growing this year called water celery. Uh, it's in rehab right now in this bed. I have it in rehab some other places because it got shipped. It was pretty sad looking. It's starting to look really nice. Uh, we'll grow massive amounts of that in this system along with massive amounts of water spinach. Did I say water spinach when I said this? If I, I said that, I was wrong. This is water celery. It's also known as Korean watercress, but it's quite celery-like. It's a... Uh, gourmet vegetable in Korean and other Asian cuisines. We're growing that here. How about this? Um, whenever I have suckers in my aquaponic systems or anywhere I'm growing tomatoes, I take the, the suckers, I cut them, and I root them, and I root tomatoes. Once those tomatoes are nicely rooted, I just pick anywhere in one of my berms that a tomato can grow. I dig a hole and I shove it in there, cover it up, and let it be. It either survives or it doesn't. What does that do? It gives me tomatoes all year long with no real effort, I don't care if any of them die because I have literally hundreds of them throughout the year. We have a bad problem with tomato blight here, but there's always something producing somewhere, so I have tomatoes all through the growing season with no real effort. But if I was a tomato farmer, how many tomatoes do you think I could, I could clone in this bed? The answer is about 200 at a time. 
for my next planting to deal with blight organically, but it's not sustainable. Oh, I digress. Uh, more water chestnut. This will probably produce more water chestnut. This one bed that we can eat in a year. Little mint. Here's our green onion. So every time we use a green onion, we take the tip, pop it in. I haven't had to buy a green onion in a long time, but I keep buying them anyway because I keep getting more green onions. I have green onions all throughout the property. Here's, here's our non-sustainable broccoli. So we're growing uh, nine broccoli plants <laughs> in a space most people would grow maybe two. And as you can see, it's not hurting our product. Look at that. Have you ever seen such a beautiful head of broccoli? Look at that. I mean, my goodness. Uh, that one's almost ready to cut, but it's still nice and tight so we can let it go for look at the stalks. So my only concern here is how long do I let this broccoli go before I take it out to put something else in because it's not going to handle our summers even in a system like this. A little bloody dock growing down here. Uh, more mint. Oh, you got to have some beauty. So we got some uh, dark purple irises that a neighbor gave me. I just popped into some net pots and there's been a water iris and an iris. Water irises are irises that are growing in water and a non-water iris is the same iris planted not in the water. They'll grow in the water just fine. I got a little test bed for my cover crop here, but what's just been planted in here is our water spinach. Water spinach we found really likes to be oil and in water, so we'll train it out on the water and we'll it'll, it will bruise all the water spinach we can eat all summer long out of this one bed. There's our bluegills, and those guys, there's a goldfish there, but the bluegills were all caught from local streams and ponds. Uh, no shipping involved. I like to fish anyway. Uh, they survive our winters just fine. There's some catfish in here too you probably won't see, but they survive our winters just fine. In fact, this system lost two fish all winter long. The mulberries are uh, joining the aquaponics party. How's that? How's that for Swiss chard? Compare that to what you get, the crappy crap you get in a store, especially when you're buying organic and they don't put preservatives on it. You think you get anything like that? I don't. Uh, a little bit of uh, pea. See in the end of it's kind of useful life cycle around here but uh that's how this system works this system is really dead simple we have that same pump down there we have a spray arm to keep circulation up we have a delivery system because everything's off two branches the same distance one ebb and flow bed and uh three wicking beds and there's no reason if we wanted to we can't extend this system somewhere else but what we're trying to do here a little bit differently than we would if we weren't in educational facilities, instead of building one gigantic system, we're building multiple systems that we probably otherwise would not. We'd probably just keep extending one. It's easier. It's more efficient. But by doing this, we can bring students here, and when they say, well, I only have, you know, a small area. Okay, well, this is 64 square feet. This is 8 by 8. Uh, it extends a little bit. So we'll do 9 by 9, right? This is 81. What is it? 9, nine times 9 is 81. 81 square feet at the maximum that this is taking off. One pump, and we can infinitely expand the system if we want to, and it's beautiful. We call them Miyagi's because they look like Mr. Miyagi's backyard as the goldfish hang out down there. One bit of warning, see how big those goldfish are? They're pretty big when they went here. A lot of people like to add goldfish to their system. They're cheap, they're pretty, whatever. You better have a place to grow them out so they're at least that big. If you put little goldfish, like the feeders, because they're all little feeder goldfish that we grow in these big, beautiful uh, comets, tails but if you put them oh there's a catfish tail i don't know if you can see the catfish tail right there the fork tail that's a channel cat uh, but if you put those goldfish in there when they're about that big with the bluegills they will absolutely tear them up you just fed the, the bluegills is all you've done anyway hope it makes sense to you guys like how these three systems work i'm going to be putting in a fourth system that was part of my that was the components that were in my indoor system right over there by that shed you can see in the background uh, over the next couple weeks, hopefully I'll get that in. I want to do that really, really pretty, really beautiful kind of showcase. And uh, that'll end it. Anything we do beyond... Oh, no. we got one more system going over here. Big, beautiful aquatic system is going to be going on over there. Uh, once that's done, anything else will just be an expansion of one of these systems. But uh, if you think this stuff's not sustainable, it's probably because you're not really informed as to how this stuff works. Anyway, there you go. Three systems, three different ways, various uh, footprints.